Hi all, welcome to Southern Cross Amateur Astro and our ongoing video user guide for APT where this time we're going to be looking at the camera tab. Now the camera tab operates in two different modes, uh, one for your DSLR or mirrorless camera and another mode that uses your CCD and CMOS cameras. So we'll have a look at both of them in this video. So what you see on the camera tab varies slightly depending on what camera you have connected. Uh, it's not much of a difference, mainly it's down the bottom down here. Uh, these top sections here are all the same. And I'll just run through those quickly before going on and doing the individual types of cameras. So over we go. Uh, where am I going to? APT, how's that for going? Okay, first of all you have your camera connect and disconnect button up here on the right hand side. I've covered connecting and disconnecting cameras previously. Um, so you can look at those videos if you need to. Directly under that is your plan selection where you can go in and you can pick a particular plan that you might want to uh, be using that night. Um, so what am I going to do? I just want to find one with something that hasn't got too long of exposures. Uh, that'll do that one there. Um, and right next to and above that you have your start button. Now clicking on the start button obviously will start the plan, uh, that's a simple enough. Once you click start it changes to a pause button which will pause the plan at the end of the current image and then you have the resume button which of course restarts it after the resume and of course a stop button which stops the plan exactly where it is. Um, doesn't even finish the current image. Now if you shift click on start uh, you get this little options box to come on. Now you can set the plan to loop and you select the number of uh, times you want the plan to loop and it will continue looping through that many times. If you set it to zero it will loop continuously until you stop it. And then you have your scheduled uh, plan execution, what time you want to start it. Um, if you want to start at a particular time, at deep sky darkness, at astro night, or just at uh, normal night. Now this can be used in combination with your looping. Um, so if you set, say, zero loops here, um, and you schedule a, a start time, say at you know, astro night, um, you can set up beforehand, get ready to go, hit this, it'll wait for Astro Night to start, do the image and keep looping you know, how many times you've put, and uh, if you leave it all night, when Astro Night finishes, it will stop imaging. Um, though by leaving it set after that, it will actually, when Astro Night becomes active again, it will start imaging again. So just be careful with that one, but you can combine them together so that it does it at particular times and loops through it however many times you want. But you can work these in together how you want to do it. So I'm going to hit cancel because I don't want to go. <laughs> so, now with your start button as well, once you've gone into your start plan, you change to the pause button. If you hold down shift on pause and click pause, it will restart the current exposure. So I've gone 11, 12 seconds in this, I click yes. It gets rid of what it's done, pauses for whatever your pause count is here, and then restart that particular exposure. So that's just something that can do. And of course, once you've hit pause, I'm not going to wait for this to go through, um, it then changes to the resume. And once you hit resume, it goes back to pause, and that's how it all goes through. And of course, the stop button will stop it, wherever you are. Okay, so we've got the plan selector here, then you've got the plan editor next to it, and that just takes you into the editor where you can select plans, edit plans, create plans, etc, etc. That's another video on its own. But that's how that all works up there. And after that, that's where things change. So we'll come back in a couple of minutes and we'll have a look at what goes on uh, for the various uh, different types of cameras you may have. So be back in a second. Okay, I need to do this one with a live setup for the DSL for the um, CMOS camera because there's a couple of settings that the simulator doesn't use that I need to show you. 
So first of all, I'll select a plan, a uh, quick demo plan, there you go. Um, and the differences for these start coming in now. You have your columns across the top here. Um, you have your line numbering, your exposure times, your binning, the gain being used, your pause, uh, the number of uh, images to take and the filter being used and oh sorry you also have your offset column in there um, but what you also have are these two little buttons down here on the right hand side which can turn off your gain or offset column um, i generally leave the gain on but i turn off my offset because uh, i've just used the default offset i've set elsewhere which i'll show you in a few minutes so coming down the bottom, oh, just before we go, double clicking in the empty space here opens the plan editor uh, if you're too lazy to press the edit button. <laughs> There's one for you. So across the bottom here, uh, okay from these buttons I just showed you, you have ringy thingy of course, which is seen elsewhere. Then you have your object name. Um, this can be manually entered or it will be auto filled if you select something from the object browser. Then you have your exposure times here. Um, you can use one of the preset times. Uh, generally, you'll be using bulb exposure and setting your times in the bulb settings over here because you can set any time you like in there. Then you have your binning, which will list the different binnings your camera is capable of. Uh, with the 294mm Pro cameras, it does uh, 1.1 to 1 by 1 to 4 by 4. Um, but generally I use two by two. I mean, that gives you the same image scale as the uh, color version, and it's, it's a better position to be at. Uh, Unity gains 120, um, so I use 120 generally. If you don't fill in a gain here, um, it will use the last gain you used. And it's the same with up here, if you don't use a gain, it will use the last gain you used. And these particular settings here, only apply when you use the shoot button uh, they don't affect anything to do with your imaging um, they also are applied if you haven't got settings done in thing, things like uh, point craft and things like that depending on how you have them set up uh, the region of interest i'm going to leave that for now because i need to be in the simulator so i can actually have an image for you for us to work on um, so we need that uh, the image preview, that determines on what you see in the middle of your preview screen here. You can have it off and have no preview. Uh, you can have fit. Um, so I'll just load up an image here. Uh, let's go to my Dragons of Adder. I like my Dragons of Adder. So we'll put them in there. Um, so your preview images, I've got it on fit, so that's fitting the image into the preview. Uh, you can have it on one to one, which only gives you the center of it um, or you can use scroll which gives you these little arrows and each time you click on it it scrolls a bit of difference in that direction so you can do it that way um, I generally leave it on fit simply because if you want to go into a one-to-one -one, you just double click on the image and the advantage of doing it this way is it doesn't do your one-to-one uh, -one on the center automatically it will fit in wherever you click will be centered so you've got that there I double click and goes back out again so I can actually center my view on wherever I want in the image that's the way I prefer to work it now then you have your uh, cooling and warming across here um, by default the, ca the APT will turn the cooler on but stop the automatic cooling so all that does is it holds the camera at the current temperature so mine's currently set at 26 degrees and it will hold it at the 26 degrees unless you change it later on. Uh, so I'm only half a degree below the ambient temperature is where it's holding it. It's quite warm here today. So then you have cooling aid. Now you can have cooling aid start automatically when you start APT if you do it in your settings for your CCD settings. But uh, yeah, you can start it automatically. So then you can set your, what you do here is you set your target degrees yeah, say zero I'll just set it for zero uh, your cooling steps now this is how far it'll try and cool in one go 
Um, this allows you to have stepped cooling so you don't get condensation building up on your sensor or the lens in front of your sensor so that's what you want to do and that's why it stops APT stops the automatic cooling because if automatic cooling is used it just goes down in one go and going to create problems so just step it down you default I think seven degrees I set it at five that's just the way I am um, it makes it easier for it to reach that temperature in the timeout because this is what happens is so you set it to five so I'm 26 at the moment uh, it'll set the target to be 21 um, it'll cool down to 21 and then pause five seconds then take another five seconds off the current one so down to uh, 16 and it'll start cooling again after five seconds and the timeout is if it can't reach uh, that temperature that it sets within that cool out time um, within the timeout time then it'll fail and let you know but I generally have no problems with these settings then you have your start CTD temperature so when I start click clark on this it'll show it as 26 um, the set temperature that's the target temperature for this particular step so when I start this it'll go to 21 and the current temperature as it cools down then you've got your status whether it's idle or whether it's cooling so at the moment it's idle if I hit start okay it's cooling so it started at 26 the targets 21 and the current temperature as it goes down so it's now it's trying to reach that 21 degrees within 180 seconds so that'll that'll work fine I mean I never have any problems with that um, it really depends on what your conditions are where you're imaging it may you may have a problem at which stage you'll have to either uh, reduce the cooling steps reduce uh, increase your target temperature or whatever to make it work but that's how cooling works so for now I'm going to actually stop that because I don't need to cool it down so that's it for that now it'll just hold it at the 24.2 um, if I don't do anything else um, then you have your warming aid and this is to warm your camera in steps it works the same way but in reverse um, it will depend on you know what conditions you're in and it tries to get your camera slowly to about dew point or above it's just to reduce any thermal shock and condensation building up in your camera as you warm your camera up and again it's the same thing um, the target you can either set that manually or in your settings you can do it as an offset from your temperature up here you know five to ten degrees from that is generally fine um, but it, that's in your settings which I'll go through in the settings when I do them and you can set that to automatically select the offset based on the temperature from your sensor if you have one connected a warming steps the same thing how far above it will set um, how long to pause for each set of steps and the timeout again and again everything else is basically the same um, I'm not going to bother starting it because my sensor is already well above that temperature um, so <laughs> I don't need to worry about it so I'll just close that one down now once you've warmed it uh, before you disconnect your camera uh, you turn the cooler off and it'll come up with a warning making sure telling you to make sure you've warmed your camera um, otherwise you might end up with thermal shock and damage your camera and do you want to continue so just click yes so now it'll turn the cooler off and it'll just warm to whatever temperature it wants to be at um, so that's fine there then you have uh, your camera name uh, you can set that in your settings if you want to change it from what it is for the default um, that's fine there and then you have your actual camera settings not much in here to do um, but a new feature of APT is when the camera is connected or when you open these settings box uh, you get these gain offset pairs and this is coming from the camera itself so uh, if I want the highest dynamic range which means a uh, gain of zero I want an offset of two uh, for the unity gain which is 120 I want an offset of six and for the lowest noise uh, it's a 390 uh, gain which I think is a bit much and uh, an offset of 30 generally for this particular camera you go around the web pipe and people tell you to use an offset of 30 but that's only necessary if you're using high gain um, the, the higher your offset is the less usable area you have in your histogram um, 
so basically where this black level is here your you your um, offset is how far from the left edge your black point is set and if you have a higher offset this black point gets set further and further and further to the right um, which reduces the number the amount of ADU you've got across the image um, now this image was particularly was taken when the uh, setting at 30 and as you can see my range starts at 2240 by using the 6 I take about 2000 off that left hand side there um, it seems to be working fine it goes between 2, 250, 300 or so off the left which is plenty you just want to keep your uh, black point away from the very left edge so that's what that is and that's not something new in APT it'll tell you what to you know what you should be using um, I was a bit skeptical about using 6 and so was Ivo when we I talked to him, to him about this to learn exactly what this new part was um, he thought 6 might be a bit small I don't know about the 2 one yet I've got to test that one out later on but um, yeah that holds it off the edge more than enough for what I need and so that's what I set there uh, USB speed uh, oh, so, sorry it also shows you your minimum and maximum gain settings at the top here um, USB speed I generally leave it at 40% uh, which is the minimum uh, goes up to 100% for this camera and um, you shouldn't need to change it unless you're having problems but some people do play with it so just be careful with that one uh, if your camera has a built-in dew heater you can enable it in here um, and these are your white balance for your red and blue channels suggesting not to play with them unless you know what you're really doing um, there's generally no need to change them uh, seeing I use a mono camera I don't need to change them anyway and that's what you get in there so they're your camera settings and that's it for the uh, CMOS camera except for the region of interest which I'll go into the simulator to show you how that works so I'll be back with that one in just a short while take care okay so here we are back in the uh, simulator so I can show you the region of interest settings now if you have the region of interest setting turned on which with this little indicator and it's highlighted um, when you select a region of interest you have these four settings at the moment uh, we're hoping to be able to change that into a user defined one but that's uh, what it is at the moment so I'll select a half and with the center of region in interest it'll take a half size image out of the middle of your camera here so what you want to look at is something like these little circles here we should get that one in we should get that one in so if I do a shoot now it'll come up one two three seconds busy and it'll come up and as you can see there you go we are centered on the middle of the image there so that's fine that works good um, now I'll turn that off again take another image and shoot that okay and what you can do with the region of interest if you turn off the center so it's just a blank one like that and you select your region of interest so I'll go half again then you can just click somewhere on the image you want to be the center of your uh, region of interest so I might click on say this one here this little circle of stars you've got another simulated one there uh, but I'll click on this just once and I'll hit shoot and what it'll do it will center that one in your region of interest there we go so that's centered um, on that particular point so that's what region of interest can do for you so you can move it around uh, as you see that little cir circles in there but you can move it around and put the region of interest where you want but to see the new region of interest you need to um, get a new image otherwise it, you won't know you've moved it so that's just the way it works so there you go I've moved it to the other side just by doing that and if I click here I'll click down over here on the right do another exposure so you can just move the region of interest anywhere you want to so that's how you move the region of interest around I'll turn that back off again and go back to a full-size image so that's how region of interest works uh, quite easy and you may want to use it it's handy if you've got a very small target um, it's not going to take up a lot of your sensor it's you know like a, a pre-crop into what you want to do and it creates a much smaller image uh, each time you halve the image 
size with the um, or the region of interest so a half size region of interest reduces the size of the file four times so if you go a quarter it's going to reduce it eight times etc 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 so I'm just going to leave that off for now but that finishes it for the CCD camera CMOS and we'll go take a look at a DSLR instead be back shortly okay so here we are in the uh, camera tab for a DSLR and as I say the changes start straight away um, across the top you have your various columns your exposure lengths uh, your ISO setting the pause between images uh, the number of images you'll be taking on that particular one the quality uh, the AV and filter if you're using one uh, and your of course you have your line numbering for your plan here now for quick access to the plan editor you, you like I said the edit button up there or you can just double click in this square here and it will open it up as well so that's just another way to do it then you have your object name uh, this can be manually filled in or we will it will be automatically filled in if you select an object from your object browser next to that is ringy thingy which I've explained previously and then you have an A and F button here um, what these do they switch on your and off your AV and filter column so if you're not using a filter you can just click that away if you don't need to look at your AV you can click that as well and it gets rid of it so that's what they do there um, the next line is your bulb and timings so these are timings that your camera is capable of uh, you can select the time from there or you can just go on bulb setting and set the bulb seconds over here on the right then you have your ISO so it'll display the ISOs your camera is capable of uh, I've got an old camera here so 6400 is the max without extending so you can set whatever you want to in there um, your quality of the image you're taking um, just so you know these particular settings only apply if you're using the shoot button uh, other settings will apply if you're using a plan so this is only for the shoot button and if you don't have settings done in uh, plate solving or whatever it will use these settings as well um, then you have your quality you can shoot um, whatever quality you'd like generally for if I'm doing a shoot button it's generally setting something up so I leave that on on L but you can set it to whatever you need to there and the AV that your camera is capable of uh, my lens is actually an f4 but I've got a tele converter on it so it's at f5.6 because I lose one stop so that's what you can have there okay then we come on to uh, your image preview and this works the same no matter which one you've got I generally leave it on fit um, you can have it off so you don't get a preview um, it's only showing that because I've already got one there you can go to one to one which just centers it on your uh, on the center of your image um, and you have one to one scroll which has these little arrows which is allows you to move around the image using the arrows generally I just leave it on fit because if I want to go one to one I can just double click on it and the advantage of using it this way is if I double click wherever I double click will be centered um, so I can center it anywhere I like and just double clicking on and off next you have your destination um, I will always use mine just to the PC but you can set it as you can see you can have just on the camera or you can store a copy on the camera and the PC I just go straight to PC uh, easiest for me now your anti vibration pause this is basically your mirror lockup um, I don't use it you there's really no reason to use it if you're doing longer exposures anything over three or four seconds uh, the mirror shake will be overridden by the data that gets collected anyway so there's really no need to use it unless you're taking really short exposures for some reason uh, so that's something I don't use but if you want to have your delay between the mirror going up and the image being taken you can set it there uh, it's up to you but there's really no reason to use it unless you're doing extremely short images uh, then your long exposure control uh, for most modern cameras it will be a virtual control um, really you only need to worry about these other ones if you're using a really old camera and you need to have the you know, various cables connected for them to work properly so generally that will be on virtual most cameras um, I mean you're talking about early 2000 cameras 
Um, but anything from from the mid mid two thousand and five or two thousand and six or whatever will generally use virtual. Uh, then you have your white balance. You can set this to whatever you like. I just leave it on daylight because after all, stars are just yeah suns at a, just a long way away. Um, but if you're shooting in RAW, it doesn't really matter anyway because you can change that um, in post-processing anyway. But I just leave it on daylight. And of course, then you have your camera information on the on this side here. And that's it for the DSLR. There's, there's nothing really uh, important about it, uh, nothing really strange about it, and it's easy enough to use. Um, I think that's it for now for the camera tab. So I'll leave you all here. Um, wishes all clear skies and hope to see you in another video shortly take care all and talk to you later